Hello, Andy. This is Colin. I want to be able to get in tonight. I'm sweating like a pig. I'm sweating like a pig. I'm sweating like a pig. David here, What Up Gaming, episode 316. I'm going to do this every time. It's episode 369. Nice. Um, it's never going to get old. I am such a baby. I'm so a teenager at heart, at mind. It's just the body's let me go big time. But we'll go through the games we've been playing this week. Um, did I say David? I don't even know anymore. First game we played this week was Zombie Driver Ultimate Edition. Now, this was one of the first ever games that we got sent to review. So, that's going back uh, 10 years now, I guess. And it was for the Xbox One, I believe. I think it was one of the launch-ish games for the Xbox One. I might be misremembering. Mis but, the essence of this game is... It's a top-down uh, zombie driving shooter mode sort of game. So imagine like the graphical stylings of Grand Theft Auto 1 and 2 on the original PlayStation, and maybe even Grand Theft Auto with its stories on the DS and things like that, where it was more top-down. This is like a full 3D world top-down view, and you've got shoot and things, and you got a, you can run zombies over, blood splatters all over. Graphically, it looks quite nice. Even 10 years later, it still looks nice. Highly detailed little sprites. Sprites, polygons with bitmaps over the top, probably. And it's just a nice little game. It's simple. It's... Oh, there is a weapon over in this section of the map. Drive to the weapon, pick it up, and drive back. And it's just getting there and getting back that's the problem because of all the zombies and stuff. And then sometimes you'll be like driving somewhere and then something will explode and it's like, oh my god, there's a big massive zombie monster. Destroy that before you come back, otherwise it'll take over the world. Woo! And I quite enjoyed it. It was very basic, very simple. I just enjoyed the game. So if you don't have it and you're interested in these sort of like combat driving racing games, then I'd give it a go. It's a nice little game. So, Zombie Driver Ultimate Edition, really good little game. Next up, Avatar The Last Airbender Quest for Balance. Now, I've never really watched the Avatar The Last Airbender sort of TV, cartoons, anime, whatever you want to call them. I did watch the movie, and I was one of the only ones I thought, it's not that bad. You know, it's watchable, it's pleasant, it's okay. Um, but yeah, getting this game, I just assumed from the pictures it'd be a baby's like Zelda action combat sort of game. I was wrong. It plays very much like a, the Lego sort of games, you know, like the really old sort of games where it's a fixed camera angle and you go along the screen and hit things and light puzzle elements and things like that. And I just feel that it's very much made on a budget. It's very much made where it'll have a full text, a full like writing of what's happening. And your character will have like single words like, oh, wow, oh no. You know, just really basic. And it's like, come on. If you're going to get the license, get the people into the recording booth, get voice alikes sound the likes, whatever you want to call them, and make the bloody game watchable for people who watch the cartoons and don't know much about gaming. It's a very much like a children's game, very basic. The platforming, I couldn't get into because of the fixed camera perspective of the level. So instead of being able to freely, you, you freely roam around the 3D environment, but the camera just pans left and right or up and down or whatever it's doing. And it's very hard to gauge distance and perspective on the levels that you're trying to jump over and climb over and things. And I just feel that it is a very, very basic game. It's not made with the love or the attention or the detail needed for this sort of thing. And myself, I think it was really bad. I, I didn't like the game. I gave it a really bad review. 
uh, watch our gameplay of it and see what you think. It's on our YouTube channel now. Please leave comments of why I'm an asshole and why this is a great game. So next up, Train Sim World 3. And I don't know why I keep trying to say Tran Sim World. It's like, no, it's not a transvestite, it's just a train. I don't know if anyone, there, there will be some weird people out there who get some sexual gratification for rubbing their hands up against the metal railings of a train. I'm gonna skip all this now and pretend I never mentioned any of this. I'm not even gonna edit it out because that's how strange this week's podcast is going to be. So, Train Sim World 3. I loved. It's not only like the full train sim where you're in the cockpit pressing buttons, pulling levers, doing things, but you also have a full 3D world where you can get out of the train, walk around and do things. And it's been met with the attention to detail, the love, the care that the Avatar game wasn't. And if you are into trains and you're into this sort of thing, this game is absolutely brilliant. I loved it. The only thing that I don't like about these sort of games is you get a basic train set, tracks and things, and then everything else is you pay £5 for new um, train stations, new trains. Everything's DLC, everything's downloadable, but I can get it. It's like they can't make everyone's train station, they can't make everyone's favourite trains, they can't do things like that and you just have to hope that things that they do actually go along and make certain other things from the games but try flip train sim world 3 is an amazing game and i did see the trailer or the announcement of train sim world 4 so i'll be eagerly waiting for more news on that and hope it's just as good and just made that little bit much better Next up, Up or Lava. Now this is a hard game to review because it's such a simple concept. You are a 3D character in an open world-ish environment where there's things floating around and so imagine like a 3D platformer where you have to try and go vertical up as quickly and as, as fast as possible. Because as you're going up, a time will hit and then all of a sudden the lava will raise 10 meters and then it'll raise 10 meters. You know, so the lava's always rising. So you have to scramble up and climb up as much as possible. It's made with like the, like the physics of a lot of these sort of like really bad simulation sort of games. So it's not perfect. You bounce off things, you fall off things that you should be standing on, and things like that. But I can see that this sort of concept could be a really good little game. If you add this and 100 players in at the same time, and you can all batter each other about, but keep it more realistic than the Fall Guys and things, and you have to try and scramble up as much as possible, you can push people, tug people from their perch, and I think this game could be amazing. It really could. Whether it's worth £20, £30, or whether it should be a free-to-play game, that's another story. I quite enjoyed it, but it's very simple and very minimal in the actual core gameplay of the game. So that is up or lava, so I'll keep it as a meh. See how the development goes on the game. Next up, we have Golf evolution simulation now in my basic head i just assumed this was a golf game made on a budget but it's not a golf game it's a game featuring golf cars and it's a kind of like a i think it's got if anyone remembers the game a couple of weeks ago the taxi simulation Taxi City Simulation or something like that. It's very similar to that. It's got an open world city to drive through, but it's got a lot of uh, stunts and challenges in the world. And you go through stunt one, stunt two, stunt three. And it's got like driving challenges where you gotta go through the environment and get to the end. And 
it played okay. I mean, I was playing with like the the keyboard and buttons and stuff, so it wasn't like a proper pad or wheel. It was just a simple pick up, have a quick blast around. It looks okay. It's very basic. It looks like a PS2 high res sort of game, but uh, I'm not 100 percent sure how much the game is. It's on Steam. It plays well enough. It's quite good at the driving the physics again like a lot of these simulation games you hit something wrong and you bounce off like you've gone off the screen funny funny that is golf evolution simulation so i'd say it's fun for a bit but i wouldn't say it's worth the full amount again these sort of games are always in development they're always being updated so we'll see where it is in the next few weeks the next few months next up we have tomb raider anniversary now, I think, I might be wrong, but I think this was one of the first games that Crystal Dynamics made. And they did the anniversary game, so it's like a remake of the original game to get their feet wet within the Tomb Raider universe. And you can tell it's old. It still plays very much like the old Tomb Raider games, but it's got a lot more modern features into the game, which make it play a bit better. It's still not the new rebooted Tomb Raider games that we love today, but it's better playing than the older Tomb Raider games. It's caught in the middle, not as good as the new ones, nowhere near as bad as the old ones. It's still a bit janky. Graphically it looks a lot better, it plays a lot better. If you find it cheap, um, I think this was a 360 version I played, and yeah, it's not too bad. It's not too bad, it's not the best, but it's not bad. So, next up we have Project High Rise Architects Edition. Now this game I've had for years and I've never played it. So I thought, do you know what, I'll give it a quick go. And within the first five seconds I fucked up big time. Completely and utterly, utterly boxed it up. It's, imagine like a Sim City sort of game. But instead of being the city you're doing, you're planning the building. Like the interior layout of the building, the interior of whether it's going to be shops, whether it's going to be a cafe, whether it's going to be working blocks, like uh, office blocks. And you have to put the electricity cables in, the water cables in, all that as you're going through. And the very first five seconds, I put an office block above the electrics and I couldn't get, no, it was the water, sorry, it was the water. And I couldn't get the water to go any higher than the first level. So I knackered the whole thing up. I didn't know what I was doing. Graphically, it's very, very nice. Very, um, it looks like vector graphics because it looks so clean and crisp. It looks so gorgeous. Very 2D, it looks hand animated. It looks really nice. And I would say it's a really good little game. I'm just an idiot and I messed up big time. Um, so that is Project High Rise Architects Edition. I would say get this is a good little game. So next up, we have two movies that I've watched this week. So the first one is the Gran Turismo movie. And this one, I didn't really know that much about the Jan, whatever his name was, the real driver that this is based on. Um, I think he did quite well in real life. Not massively like F1 standards, but he did really well. Um, and I will say that the movie was good, it kept you bobbing along, it kept things going along, it was really nice. Um, the thing I didn't like was when I found out more about the driver and the, the things that were happening, was that the movies skipped things around, it's like it's moved like four years around and stuff to try and make it more uh, dramatised. When in reality he'd already got his contract and already got his race, he'd already uh, had the big crash. It was like really weird how they like swapped everything around. But I guess if you're not a big into this thing, it's a movie, it's drama, it's a, it has to have things to follow and to do. So I would say Grand Turismo movie is a really good little movie. Not the best, it's just something to sit there and watch. And I did actually watch the Barbie movie. I only watched this because of all the massive hype that it's had recently and I watched it and it was like, it was okay, had a couple of really funny bits, 
but I just didn't get the massive attention why it's had all this you know, big fuss about it but I don't know I don't know and I will just sort of say it's a nice little movie it's well you know the, the gra not graphics the uh, the backgrounds, the colour scheme, everything just looks amazing. It looks really clear, really crisp. Pink is a lot of colours in the movie. And that is what we've been doing this week. I wouldn't recommend Barbie. It wasn't the best. But I would recommend watching our weekly output on YouTube. So every Monday, we have the UK Top 40s. Every Tuesday, we have the Boosteroid video. Every Wednesday, we have the Which is Best. Every Thursday we have a retro inspired video, every Friday we have the podcast, every Saturday we have the games played this week, and every Sunday we have the roundup of the news, for the, the gaming news for the week. So it's been me David for episode 369 of the One Again podcast, we'll be back after this break for this week's news.